But I will start off and go ahead and introduce uh, some of my colleagues from various colleges around UCF. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Mrs. Kim Small from the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Then we have uh, Dr. Teresa Dorman with our uh, College of Sciences, Mr. Mike McKee from the College of Optics and Photonics. And as I mentioned before, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have James Smith joining us from the College of Undergraduate Studies as well then. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kim. Each of the colleges will have about five minutes to kind of just do a brief introduction about each of their areas and the majors they offer before we open the floor to the Q&A then. So without further ado, Kim, we'll, we'll hand it off to you. Okay, thank you, Luke. Um, my name is Kim Small. I'm the Director of Academic Advising for the College of Engineering and Computer Science. And um, hopefully there are some of you that are interested in pursuing one of our majors. Um, I'll go over the majors that we offer um, within our college. Um, and hopefully one of those is something that, that you're interested in. So we have aerospace engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, construction engineering, environmental engineering, industrial engineering, electrical engineering, computer engineering, uh, computer science, information technology, and material science and engineering. I think I got all of them. Um, we also have a joint program with photonic science and engineering, which Mike McKee will tell you about um, in a few minutes. Um, some of the things that you may um, find that might be important as um, you're preparing um, for college, um, and one of the things that I will tell you for our engineering majors, it is what we consider um, uh, a restricted um, access program. So what does that mean? That means that to be a declared as a full engineering major in the major, you have to complete calculus one, calculus two, physics one with calculus, and general chemistry one with a C or better grade. Before that, you're just in a, what we call an engineering pending category. So it may be mechanical engineering pending, computer engineering pending, et cetera. Or maybe you're not sure which um, engineering major you want. You can also declare undecided engineering. Um, one of the things that I will tell you is um, engineering, uh, and computer science is heavily built off of the foundations of math and science. So it's very important that you start out in the right math class your first semester here at UCF. There are several ways that that can happen. A lot of you may have incoming credit, AP, IB, dual enrollment, et cetera. Um, but we do have a math placement exam um, that students if you do not have any incoming credit in math that you will be required to take, and that will show what your placement's gonna be in the first math course your first semester at UCF. We tell students to take it very seriously. It's easy just to sort of kind of blow through it, but if you don't take it seriously, you may not place in the math course where you feel like your ability is. So, to be successful in that, you need to do the practice problems and then you need to take the practice exam and you need to retake the practice exam until you get at least 70% on that section and then take the exam so that hopefully you can move on and place as high as calculus one is the highest placement for that. We also require chemistry and um, chemistry, there's a couple of options for chemistry, but for one of the options, you also have to take the chemistry placement exam. So we would encourage you to do that as well in preparation for orientation. And now we have a computer programming placement exam um, to make sure that our students who have to take a programming class for their majors are um, ready to do that as far as having a basic foundation um, to be able to go into that class. And, and it will tell us that as well and tell you as, uh, whether or not you're ready. So those are some things that when you do um, sign up for orientation, you'll get information related to those. And we encourage you to be proactive with those, but to take them seriously and do the best you can on them. Um, we're excited that you're interested in UCF and interested in possibly an engineering, computer science, or information technology major. And um, I'll, that's sort of like my five minutes here. So I will go ahead and we'll pass it the baton to the next um, to the next college, and um, I'll be ready for questions and answers later. All right. Well, Mike, uh, you are next representing our College of Optics and Photonics. 
Yeah, thanks, Luke. So the first question that you you may have, and you may not have even heard of the term photonics, is what it, what on earth is photonics? So photonics is light and light based technologies, and we actually live at the intersection of where electronics meet these light based technologies. Now you all have photonic devices on you right now. Well, you're in fact sitting in front of a photonic device because you're able to see us. But the mo a really common example of really integrated photonics is your cell phone, which dissolves into nothingness because of my virtual background. So, but you know that I've got a, a cell phone. And so you've got the display, which is a photonic display. And then you've got the camera, which has got a sensor that converts light into information. And then even computer chips are layered down with a photonic process called lithography. So for this reason, we call photonics an enabling technology. It's used across a wide range of industries, everything from uh, military, uh, where there's a lot of applications. I, we've actually got students who graduated from the photonics program working at Harris, who are working on free space optical communication to have secure communication from satellite down to ground troops. But also photonics is going to be a major driver in solving some of the 21st century's greatest challenges, such as climate change. And so you're, we're going to be able to advance the technologies, uh, make things uh, faster, uh, uh, and using less energy, using photonics. Uh, in fact, what we're doing right now, being able to do a Zoom call over the internet, is not possible without photonics. This information is being carried in a large part across a fiber optic network. And uh, our college is actually working on research that can develop faster fibers. There's actually a fiber draw tower that's in our college that is drawing fiber that has demonstrated speeds of 250 terabits per second. What you normally get up to your house is about one gig gigabit per second. So what Kim mentioned, uh, and I'm gonna share the screen here real quickly, uh, earlier was that we are a joint program with the College of Engineering the reason you've only heard, you, you, hopefully you've heard of this and you're gonna remember this after, after this little talk, but there are only six of these programs in the United States and there's a tremendous need for engineers. Our students are getting hired very quickly. We're seeing a starting salary here in the Orlando area at about $70,000, but they're being picked off pretty quickly by large and small companies. Um, so, you know, if you do have any questions, I'm also gonna drop into the chat a video uh, on our photonic science and engineering program so you can peruse a little bit more. And then at the end, if you do have more questions, uh, I'm, we're more than happy to answer those. So I'll pass it back to Luke. Thanks, Mike. And, uh, and next we have Dr. Teresa Dorman representing the College of Sciences. Unmuting first because <laughs> technology. <laughs> so good evening to everybody. Um, first by introductions, my name is Teresa Dorman, as it says right there. Um, I'm an associate dean in the College of Sciences, and I oversee our undergraduate academic and student affairs. And first, I just want to welcome all of you and thank you all for being interested and in coming to the University of Central Florida. Um, so to talk a little bit about the College of Sciences, the first thing I think um, that everyone should know about this College of Sciences is, interestingly, we support well, definitely the two colleges who just gave presentations through the various coursework that we provide. But we are an extremely diverse college in the number of degrees and opportunities that we um, provide for our students. So the College of Sciences is um, made up of degrees that include the sciences, so the physical and the life sciences, biology, chemistry, <clears throat> physics, and a forensic science. And then we have the analytic and computational sciences, which are the statistics, the mathematics, data sciences, and actuarial sciences. We are also the behavioral and social sciences. So this is going to be anthropology, political science, international global studies, psychology, sociology, social sciences. In addition, we have the communicative sciences. And this is our, I think, most diverse area where which is really the Nicholson School of Communication and Media. These are the programs that are advertising and public relations, communication and conflict, digital media, film, human communication, journalism, radio, and TV. So a real diverse college is what um, we have to offer in the College of Sciences. I think for students who are interested in pursuing degrees in the sciences, it's important that everyone should know all of our degrees are research and applied based. So 
Um, as a College of Sciences, we believe that applied work and taking what you understand and learn in the classroom into the field, literally in the case of some of our biology courses, or actually applying the knowledge in social settings is a very important aspect of your degree experience. Um, I know I'll have definitely have an opportunity to talk more about the College of Sciences in this presentation, and I know that there will be questions that potentially I'll be able to answer as well that will give you more information. Um, I am also aware that, and I hope that you were able to review the video about our college. So there are a couple of things I want to update you on to just make sure that you know that are new and were not actually included in the video you saw. The first thing I want to share is that in the College of Sciences, we have um, one new degree program that is starting this fall. It is the Data Sciences Bachelor's of Science degree that's going to be offered out of our Statistics and Data Sciences Department. Um, this new degree program is a joint uh, program between the College of Sciences, two, two areas, Statistics and Math, and the College of Engineering. Um, the degree is intended to help students understand and work with large data sets and has applications really well beyond the physical sciences and multiple applications in the humanities area and social sciences and education and beyond. So we're very excited about this new degree. Another new program I want to make sure you know about um, that is also coming on this fall is a new track or a new subset degree within our uh, political sciences area. And this is a intelligence and national security Bachelor of Arts program. Um, this is another new degree program area that we are very excited about because we have a center uh, related to international studies that's through the School of Politics, Security, and International Affairs that really contributes heavily to the curriculum and what we expect the students to learn going through this degree. Um, a third new thing that I want to tell you about is also out of our School of Politics, Security, and International Affairs, and this is a new certificate program. This is a certificate program in politics of race, gender, and identity. So I just wanted to make sure that I plugged really quickly these new programs that are coming on board this fall. Um, as for just kind of having a general conversation with all of you who are going to be new students to UCF and new to the university experience, one of the pieces of advice that I always like to share when I'm talking at, at open houses such as this is to talk to you as new students and to talk to you about the student experience and really what I hope you're able to gain as a university student and a university graduate. You're going to be working on a degree for the next four years that hopefully will prepare you for something. And I think that's the question I want to pose to all of you is what is it that you want to do with this experience when you're done? So where do you see yourself in the four years? What is the passion that you're working towards? What is the motivation? What is the impact? that you want to have in your community, on the world. And that's what I want you to think about as you think about your degree selection and the choice of the major that you're choosing. Because at UCF, we have a diverse array of programs represented here this evening of different degrees that you can pursue to prepare you for that thing that's next. But if you know what that is, if you know what your goal is, we have advisors and faculty and individuals across the university who can help you pick the right major and the right courses, the right complementary programs, the right experiences to prepare you for that. And that's really a good advantage of something I want to make sure you take advantage of while you're here at UCF. Um, another quick piece of, I'm going to just say again, advice that I want to give to everybody who's coming to UCF is I want you to think about who you are as a student. And what I mean here is thinking about how you study, how you take classes, what are your time commitments, what are your obligations. Um, these are all things that will impact your ability to balance this university experience with really life. 
Um, and again, I'm going to say the advisors and the advising community and your faculty are all there to help support you through this process. So for example, I mean, if you are also working a full-time job while completing this degree, think about your course load in the context of that work requirement and find the balance so that you can truly be successful and complete the degree that you're working on. Mm -hmm. This degree that will help you um, achieve that goal of what it is you wanna do when you're done with the university experience. So, I'm looking forward to hopefully answering more specific questions about the college, but I know that there's so much information out there already. Definitely use those sources. It's the catalog, it's the website, mm -hmm. it's meetings like this, but it's also really talking individually to your advisors and their faculty who are teaching your classes that we're going to definitely, hopefully, definitely, hopefully <laughs> answer all of the questions that you have. So thank you very much. And I look forward to talking to you guys some more. All right. All right. Well, we are going to kind of move on and maybe try to work on addressing some of the questions you guys have posed. And as is common uh, this time of year, we get a lot of questions about both the math placement test and the chemistry placement test. Mm -hmm. And maybe Dr. Gorman, maybe you can address a little bit about mm -hmm. why we require those tests, what they fulfill, um, some of the questions we received were, what, what's the highest math I can place into with the math placement test? And, uh, and Kim and Mike, feel free to chime in if you have anything you want to fill in as well. Yeah, so um, I, first off, for the math placement test, I have to say I've never really liked the fact that we use the word test here, um, because I think it's really more of an assessment. So this math placement assessment is intended to assess or determine the knowledge that you have retained and, and know in mathematics. So this assessment, what, what it'll do is, the example I like to give is this. It may be that you have completed um, an AP course for calculus while you were in while you were working on your high school degree and maybe you took that AP course during your junior year of high school and possibly you even earned a three or a four that would place you into a more advanced level course here at UCF we still would like for you to complete the math placement test because what this will do this assessment will do is determine how much you've retained in that calculus knowledge. So what the placement test will do will we'll either say you need to start at the basic, most basic level, which is intermediate algebra, and there's a whole series here. So in, it's intermediate algebra to algebra to pre-calc trig to calculus. So the highest placement, and Kim, please correct me on this one, the highest placement is calculus, correct? Correct. Okay. So, um, you may place into calculus as a result of that AP test score. But if you took that AP test and that, was cor that coursework over a year ago, what do you actually know? What do you actually know today in calculus? And so the placement test determines what you've retained and recommends or requires where you're going to start. Now, in the case of this AP score, you've got AP credit. So you're going to place where the AP credit says you can start. You can jump in the line. But if you take this math placement test and it says, well, guess what? You really only retained, according to this test, college algebra skills. You probably need to do some refresher before you can just jump into the, the course that the AP says that you can start in. So for those students who have already completed either college level coursework, maybe through dual enrollment or AP coursework, um, that credit counts and will work towards university prerequisite requirements. But we still do want to recommend you take the placement test. So we, you know, really not so much us, but so you know what you've retained in that. Kim, anything to add to that? No, and I think to just piggyback on Teresa, it's the remediation part. She's talking about this very important because here's the thing. 
you have to have strong algebra skills to move on into the progression of your calculus. And if those are weak, and they may be weak because you took college algebra in the ninth or eighth grade, right? And you haven't really practiced it. So doing the practice problems and um, is a good idea to kind of help refresh your skills because you probably have maybe forgotten something because you just haven't practiced it. And it's, it's real important to have that really strong foundation in math for your engineering courses because you will use that in your engineering courses. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add, so the question was twofold with math placement and chemistry placement. For the chemistry placement test, this is a um, test that will determine whether or not you start in the first chemistry fundamentals course um, now we're, we're in a transition right now. So depending on whether you're starting in the summer or the fall, uh, this will vary ever so slightly. Talk to your advisor. Um, but with chemistry placement, really what our chemistry placement test is assessing, again, it's an assessment, is your basic knowledge in chemistry and, and this is important, algebra skills because in chemistry, in the chemistry fundamental sequence, if this is a requirement of your major, not only is, of course, chemistry knowledge important, but math skills are also very important to this science course. So the chemistry placement test has a dual purpose of assessing basic math skills the, at the algebraic level and basic chemistry knowledge. Well, thank you guys. Um, Kim, we did receive a question and I'm gonna direct this one to you. Um, can I fuse biomedical sciences with mechanical engineering mm -hmm. if I'm interested in pursuing biomedical engineering? Maybe you can address that question. The two fused together is not the same as if you actually went for a biomedical bachelor's degree, okay? Biomedical engineering bachelor's degree. Um, we do have a lot of students that um, do mechanical engineering and maybe do a bioengineering minor if they're interested in going on to med school. We do have a master's degree in bioengineering. And typically the segue to that is mechanical engineering as your undergraduate degree. So we don't have the undergrad, but we do have the master's degree in um, biomedical engineering. So that may be something that you, know, you may wanna consider I would suggest that um, you probably, if you're going to do an engineering, do the, um, the mechanical engineering degree. There's different tracks in the master's degree, so you may even want to just look at those just to see. Um, if you're biomedical sciences, there are some minors that you can do that are bio, have some uh, biofluids tracks, that have some engineering elements and engin engineering courses in the minor requirements. So there are some things that you can piece together, but it, it won't be equivalent to a bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering. We get that question a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the next question we got, I, I'm gonna split up between kind of Kim and Mike a little bit. Um, it was, will we, we, will we be offered intro courses to help us choose a type of engineering, will that include optics and photonics as well? Well, the intro to engineering sequence, which is your freshman year, it's in the fall and spring, they're one hour courses. In the fall, we introduce you to all of the engineering disciplines. We have faculty that come and do guest lectures. And yes, we do include photonics, science and engineering in that and those courses are required for the photonic science and engineering program as well. We don't have like an intro to mechanical engineering or an intro to computer engineering course. Um, we have an intro to engineering and it covers, um, uh, surveys all of the disciplines so that you learn a little bit more about each one. So hopefully from that, you can begin to start really thinking about which one that you really are interested in. And of course, we always um, uh, advise students that if they want to learn more about a specific discipline, 
that they connect with the faculty uh, undergraduate coordinator within the department to have those conversations. And for the photonics, it would be connecting with Mike. Mike shaking his head yes. Did you want to say anything to that, Mike? Yeah, I'm, I'm the one-stop shop for photonics. Yeah. <laughs> so, and by the way, you'll see me again in Intro to Engineering if you want to hear more, so. <laughs> Okay, so they would be exposed to optics and photonics through that. Yes, they would. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Great. Um, another question we had was, uh, does the computer science curriculum also require calculus and physics that's also required for engineering? Does it require the same levels? Yes. Um, the common program prerequisites in the state of Florida for a computer science degree require calculus one, calculus two, and the calc-based physics one and physics two, those are also required for your engineering. Now where engineering is a little different than computer science is engineering goes on to require calculus three and differential equations. Computer science requires two math electives and two science electives. That's what helps make it a bachelor of science degree, but you have choices. In engineering, you don't have choices. But for the other two math courses, you could pick the calculus and the differential equation, Calc 3 and Diffie Q, or you could pick matrix and linear algebra, or you could pick statistics 2 or statistics 3 or one of those. Um, and for the, the sciences for electives, while um, engineering requires chemistry as that third science, Computer science gives you a choice. You could do biology one and biology two, chem one, chem two, biology one, chem one, or you can add physics three in there. So you have some choices with computer science where you don't with engineering. I agree. Dr. Dorman, this one is for you. Uh, if I applied as a biology major, do I have to complete a separate application for a specific track in that program then? How does that work? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm going to answer that directly, but really more broadly, because I think that applies to any degree program. So the biology degree, like most of the degrees in my college and like many degrees across the university is an open degree. So when you pick that degree with your um, decision to come to UCF, I want to be a biology major, you're a biology major. So then of the tracks, um, the different options within that degree program, you simply select which track you're interested in. So for example, if you are interested in the pre-vet zoology track, you would just declare that as a part of the degree. And actually your biology advisor will help you identify which of the tracks you want. Um, I wanna kind of spin off that question a little bit to just make sure everybody understands what I mean and what this person who asked the question already knows when they're talking about a track. So across the university, all of the, all of the degrees that we offer in all of the colleges may have an option to further focus that degree in a specific area. So in the, in the College of Sciences, we have, um, I don't know, some 20 something degrees, but when you count up all the different tracks and specializations, there are really about 80 different options that you can choose. So with the biology example, there are actually five different tracks, specializations, focused areas. There are five different areas that a student can decide to go into with that degree. I'm not going to rattle them off off the top of my head because I don't know them all immediately off the top of my head. But in biology, I know there's like, like I mentioned, there's this, there's a zoology pre-vet, there's a pre-health pre-med track, there's a botany track. Um, so it, it, it's a way to specialize that degree program. So as you're thinking about your particular major, also think about the options that are provided within that major. Again, what I said at the beginning of this presentation, what is it you wanna do when you're done with UCF? And it's not just picking the degree, but it's focusing it down to the specific track or specialization that may also be available. So again, in biology, you don't have to additionally apply to go to that specialized area. You would simply declare it. Um, where you would have to apply is would be in the case of like a limited access program. 
And so pardon me, but I'm going to spin off and answer a little bit different question with that um, or just provide some more information. Um, limited access programs and in the College of Sciences, we have a few of these. They're all and only in the Nicholson School. Um, there are advertising public relations degree, the journalism degree and the radio television degree. These are programs that if you today as a new student say I'm a journalism major, you're actually journalism, journalism pending. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that there are additional requirements that need to be met generally and most frequently in these sorts of programs, limited access programs. They're going to be specific courses that you need to take and earn a specific degree. Once you do that, um, some programs require an application to get into the next to the full degree program. Um, other programs, they're just really looking to make sure you've met requirements before they will just automatically admit you into those programs. So that's a lot of information I just said. The takeaway on this is going to be if you are in a program that actually is limited access, please do talk to an advisor in that program about your specific academic situation and any questions you have about fully getting into that program. I agree. Okay. The next question we have, uh, I might be a little more direct to Kim, but what would you recommend if I am interested in majoring in robotics? Uh, hmm. What kinds of majors would you recommend for a student that's uh, interested in that discipline? Um. Well, robotics is sort of interdisciplinary, and so it cuts across several different um, disciplines. Within our college, actually, we have a robotics minor, so that would be something that may be of interest. And um, it's a it's a combination of mechanical engineering, um, computer science, and electrical engineering type of courses. So um, it really depends on what part of robotics you're interested in? Are you interested in more of the programming piece of robotics? Or are you interested more in the physical mechanical part of robotics? So I, I think you have to determine that because not everybody wants to do programming, right? But then not everybody wants to do the mechanical pieces. They like trying to make this, the robotic think, right? Like a human and being able to, to uh, do things on command. So, yeah. I think that's really the crux of it is it depends on where your interest lies and what part of robotics you want to um, really concentrate on. And then, of course, if you're really interested in it, um, we do have a minor in robotics. You really almost have to be in engineering, computer science, maybe even a physics major, maybe a math major to be able to do this because of the prerequisites for um, the robotics courses um, and the elective courses. But again, I, I, I want to echo kind of what Teresa has been saying all along. Talk to an advisor. For a lot of these questions, when you really get down to where you know where you want to focus, go talk to somebody. Be a faculty advisor. You may need to be that to really get into more of the the content of the type of courses that you're going to take to prepare you. Um, your academic advisor is critical for your path to graduation. That's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to help you be successful and to make sure you're right on the right path. So these are resources that are very important and available to every student that comes to UCF. And we strongly encourage you to utilize advisors and faculty advisors as resources resources during your time here. Yeah, great. I did want to take a quick moment and introduce, uh, he joined us a little bit late, but we also have a representative from our College of Undergraduate Studies with us as well, James Smith. He's having a little technical difficulty with his, uh, his camera for his laptop right now, so we apologize for that. If you guys have questions, you're welcome to pose them now. We'll try to see if we can answer them through the chat by uh, by interacting with him then. Um, so question for all of you then, uh, and I thought this was a good one because maybe all of you can uh, speak to it. But if a student's interested in purchasing a computer or a laptop, do you recommend a PC or a Mac 
uh, depending on the various majors in each of your colleges then, or does it not even matter? Um, <laughs> I don't know if it matters greatly. Um, the Computer um, Technology Center, I think that's what we call it nowadays. <laughs> I used to call it Computer Store. I've been here for so long. Um, they actually have specifications, um, you know, recommended specifications, uh, and they'll have some for engineering students, um, and they have them both for um, PCs and for Macs. What I would tell a student is that there may be some specific software um, that you may want to have related to some courses. Some of these may be computer aided uh, drawing software. Um, it may be MATLAB, um, those types of things. Um, if they're more compatible with one type of computer than the other, then that may be the decision maker for you on which that you, um, which you have. We have faculty that have both. Mm -hmm. We have students that have both. I think a lot of people have a preference on what they like. And um, so I, I don't think we really recommend one over the other, but I do think maybe you might wanna look ahead to see what other uh, types of software besides you know, Windows um, and Microsoft um, software that you have to have. Um, you're gonna need obviously Adobe and things like that. But as far as very specific type of engineering type of software, we have them on our computers here in the labs. So it's not like you have to purchase those things. You can come and you can utilize those on the computers we have here, but we always have students that wanna have their own and they wanna have it so they can do whatever at home. So I think a little bit of research would probably help maybe make the decision. Good. I'm seeing uh, Dr. Dorman and Mike also nodding their heads. So I'm yeah. guessing they're probably in agreement that really there isn't a preference or a recommendation to get one or the other. No. Um, <laughs> Dr. Dorman, uh, I want to kind of pass it back to you a little bit. We always get the question a lot about students that are interested in pursuing um, some type of professional school, whether that be medical school, dental school. Um, many of the majors they might consider majoring in will fall under the College of Sciences thing. Do you have any advice for them about mm -hmm on the opportunities you guys have in the College of Sciences if they're interested in those areas? Yeah, so I absolutely. Um, the first thing I want to really say about med school um, and is that med school is not looking for a specific major. And I don't really know how clearly I can say it other than that. Medical colleges are not looking for a biology major. Medical colleges are not looking for a biomedical sciences major. They're looking for a student though, who has completed specific courses as a part of their undergraduate degree. And this includes math, physics, uh, chemistry, and biology. They're looking for specific courses. They're also looking at grades. They're looking at good grades, but they're not really looking for that to be in a particular degree. So in fact, each year from UCF, we graduate students out of Spanish with a Spanish BA who get admitted into medical college because they have completed those other prerequisite course requirements to get into med school. Um, so I think that's just really a first misconception is that people think they have to be in a particular degree program. Now, other than that, though, absolutely a biomedical sciences degree will prepare you for med school, as will a chemistry degree, as will a biology degree. So I'm not trying to turn you away from those degree programs. I'm just telling you that really you can, can and should broaden your experiences, um, primarily so because about four years ago, the medical colleges changed up the MCAT, the Medical Colleges Admissions Test. This is like the SAT of med school. They changed up that test to include more social sciences based questions. So medical colleges, yes, in addition to looking for this math, physics, chemistry, biology background, are also looking for students who have had some humanistic studies as well. Um, so it's really that broad experience that they're looking for. So 
the degree program. And I know we talked about biology earlier. And yes, in our biology degree, we have a track that is pre-med focused. Um, that will prepare you for med school um, as a course experience. But for the additional research engagement and involvement opportunities that make you a really good med school candidate, there are also a number of different ways to get at those, um, to get that experience as well. And so one really solid piece of advice that I want to give anybody who is interested in going to a medical program, um, okay, two pieces of advice. The first thing is medical colleges very broadly, widely, diversely in what they will train you in. So the first question goes back to what I said earlier. What do you want to do in med school? What kind of doctor, physician's assistant, etc. do you want to be? Brain surgeon, work with bones, work with nerves. There's all these different specializations. So that's one thing to think about. And then once you determine what field or area of medicine you want to go into, the second piece of advice I'm going to give is that you absolutely should connect with our Office of Pre-Health and Pre-Law Advising. This is an advising office that is dedicated to helping our students prepare from the beginning. So from your freshman year, prepare you for putting together that application portfolio to get into that medical college that you're interested in, to go into that specialization that you want to do. So any degree will get you there. It's the courses and the grades that the schools are looking at most importantly. Um, and look at really diversifying your university experience in preparing you for that medical college application and absolutely use the pre-health pre-law services. The advisors there, that is what they do. They know what the applications are like. They know how difficult or easy it is to get in. And they're, they're really there to help you be successful in that way. Oh, thank great. you. Yeah, thank you. Um, Kim and Mike, we've had some questions about majors in each of your, uh, your colleges, and maybe Dr. Dorman can speak to this a little bit too. Um, there's a little bit of confusion. What's the difference between a restricted access program and a limited access program? I think most of the engineering and optics programs are probably restricted access. And then Dr. Dorman, I believe your college has a few limited access programs in it. Kim, maybe you could address the restricted access question first, and then we'll, we'll pass over to Dr. Dorman. Well, the restricted access um, goes back to what Teresa was saying, where there may be some requirements course-wise that you need to meet with a certain grade to be formally admitted into the major. So for engineering, as I mentioned, we require to get out of a pending status and move into the major you have to successfully complete Calculus 1, Calculus 2, Physics 1 with Calculus, and General Chemistry 1 with a C or better grade, and you need to be in good standing at the institution. So if you meet those requirements at the end of the term that you complete those requirements, then we have a batch process that the Registrar's Office run that moves you right into the major. That's, you don't have to do anything. Now, I can let Teresa speak to limited access, but that's a little different as the name says, limited. Yeah. Means there's only probably a, num a certain number of students. That's, that's exactly correct, Kim. Um, so in sciences, in the College of Sciences, we do have some restricted access programs. So where you have to actually um, get certain grades in certain courses. These are, this is the film BA, uh, sorry, BFA, the Bachelor of Fine Arts film program is a restricted access, as is the Forensic Sciences program. That's a restricted access. Now, the limited access programs, I mentioned those earlier. These are the Advertising Public Relations, Radio, Television, and Journalism program. Uh, those three programs all out of our Nicholson School of Communication and Media. Limited access literally means we limit the number of students who are given access or admission into the degree program. Now, why do we do that? With these particular programs, with those specific ones I just named, um, we have a mandatory 
real hands-on applied component to these degrees. So for example, in the ad PR program, advertise, no, that's the bad example. Let me give you the good example. In the radio TV program. So as a part of this program, when we are not in pandemic Zoom world, um, <laughs> students actually take their upper level division courses, upper level meaning junior, senior level, they take these courses in actual studios. So we have a television studio on campus and we have a radio studio on campus. We limit the access into this program because we only have so many radio studios and television studios. We don't wanna over cram students in these facilities and dilute the educational experience. So we have the hoops that students have to jump through, these admission requirements, to limit the number of students who are admitted each semester as because we know they're going to advance through the program into these upper level courses. Limited access programs, they admit every semester. So if a student doesn't meet the um, actual requirements that are needed to get admitted in, a, in their first semester that they try, they can try again in a following semester. Um, again, though, what I'll say, and I'm certain this is for restricted access as well, if you have questions about what that means for you, talk to the advisor of that program, talk to the faculty coordinator of that program, because they're going to be able to take a look at your academic record and tell you what your chances are and where you stand with getting into that limited access or restricted access program. You're muted, Luke. <laughs> Please forget to unclick that button. I, I thank you. I did want to um, give James Smith from the College of Undergraduate Studies a quick introduction. Um, James, we got a question. What programs are offered in the College of Undergraduate Studies? Maybe you can address a little bit about the different majors that you guys offer. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. And sorry, I don't have my picture up or anything like that. But if I cut on the camera, we're going to freeze. <laughs> so, um, in the College of Undergraduate Studies, we have the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies. And one of the majors is Interdisciplinary Studies. Now you may ask, well, what in the heck is that? Because <laughs> I get that question all the time. Interdisciplinary Studies is combining multiple interests. Actually, it's um, combining three different disciplines. So a discipline could be biology, it could be um, health, it could be education. Um, we have a Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies, a Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies, and a Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies with a diversity track. Uh, we also have a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies. Now, <clears throat> our Environmental Studies major is more of an interdisciplinary piece to it. So not only do you study some sciences, and also it has two tracks, sciences track and communication and planning. So our um, environmental studies track has that interdisciplinary studies feel. In other words, you don't only look at science, but we're talking about sociology, how science or the society in itself has an effect on the environment, as well as economics. You have to take microeconomics. Um, also, political science, it has a little taste of political science in there. So all of those things have an impact on the environment. Now, the two different tracks, sciences, for those of y'all that want to get dirty, and get out there and be researchers, then the science part is that special that specialization part of it. Uh, some of you may want to be environmental lawyers or uh, write policy. Um, then the communication and planning track would probably do better. Some people want to be uh, in urban planning. Mm -hmm. So the communication and planning uh, track would probably suit you a lot better. Um, one of the things I think question before and Dr. Dorman was talking about it was someone asked about medical school. Well, interdisciplinary studies major could be a good place for you because there you can concentrate on 
the sciences such as physics, chem, uh, orgo, organic chemistry, your uh, anatomy and physiology, um, and then a minor in, let's say, medical sociology or psychology. So you can blend all those three things together. The beautiful part about interdisciplinary studies is not every student have the same path. They may go to want to go to medical school, but they may decide to have their areas in two different things. And a minor, totally way out there. They could do life and biomedical sciences, physical sciences, and have a minor in digital media. It just depends. So that's uh, interdisciplinary studies in a nutshell. Oh, great. Well, thanks, James. And again, if you have any other questions for undergraduate studies, um, feel free to type it in the Q&A below. We have a few minutes left that we can field, maybe about another one or two questions. Um, Kim, one of the questions we got uh, was, uh, if I'm interested in an engineering degree, um, what exactly is the senior design project? Well, um, Mike can probably chime in on this as well. The senior design project is really the capstone or culmination of what you have learned in your program. And so um, it is in your senior year. It's a two semester sequence of coursework. You have senior design one, senior design two. You are placed on a team. It is a team project. And of course that team goes from one to two. Um, and so, you know, senior design one, you do a lot of lit review and research on the project that you're wanting to do. Um, a lot of our students um, uh, connect with industry projects. So we have industry affiliates that will have a project um, that they may want one of our senior design groups to do. So we have that input as well. But it's great for your portfolio for when you are interviewing for your engineering job to say what your senior design project was, you know, why did you choose it? What was the result, you know, um, of your project? What, what were you trying, what problem were you trying to solve with this design? Um, I'll let Mike speak a little bit to, to it as well. Yeah, and in photonics, uh, we actually have our students, they're required to be in with electrical and computer engineering because by the nature of our field, uh, they have to uh, really learn how light is controlled through an electrical circuit because we're not a photonics, we're not an optical program where they're dealing with lenses and mirrors, we're photonics, so they have to really have some understanding of electric circuits. And then there's, there's usually a computer interface as well with any system. And, and by the way, if you're sitting there going, oh, wait, I got to do this project with a group of students at the end. And like, this is high stakes. And if it breaks, I don't graduate kind of stuff, which sort of rarely happens. And you go, I think I'm going to go somewhere else other than UCF. Any ABET accredited program in the world has this capstone requirement. Right. So if you're thinking, ah, I'll go somewhere else, it will follow you unless you go to some place in Antarctica that doesn't have <laughs> the program. Um, but it is a place for you to get really practical experience and also sort of to kill the patient in a safe way, because this is exactly what you're going to be doing as an engineer. You have to deliver a product mm -hmm. on specs, on time, on budget to a customer. So we're replicating that in your final experience uh, here at UCF. Cool. Uh, great. Yeah, I, another question we received was on minors. Uh, we had a few questions mm -hmm. related to, can I do a minor in engineering? Um, mm -hmm. Is it easy to add in a math minor if I'm working on any area of engineering then? Um, and that kind of speaks to Dr. Dorman's area as well then, since math is located under her college. Why should students add in a minor? Well, let me just say this about minor, uh, math minor in particular, and it's nothing against math minor, so I'll <laughs> say that. So it's only two classes above and beyond the required um, math that you take as an engineering. So you have to take through differential equations. Those are all required for the math minor, and then you have to take a 3,000 level, and then you have to take a four or 5,000 level math class. So let me ask you this. If you have an engineering degree, 
an employer knows you know math. So if you're going to add a minor, add something that is going to show that you have a different knowledge or skill set base. They know you know math. You have math in all of your engineering classes. You have those math classes that are required. So that's something they know you already have. So if you're going to add a minor, add something that is going to set you apart, possibly from someone else that's interviewing from the job because you've got a different skill set. So maybe say you're a mechanical engineering or an aerospace engineering. You may want a computer science minor because now programming is a big deal in all engineering, right? So that's something that you're going to have a little bit in your major, but not a lot. So maybe that, the robotics is something else that might give you more um, you know, and more of an add on to what you already have. So it's not that the math minor is not great because it is right, Teresa. It's just that it's, it may be something that instead of spending your time taking those two additional classes, maybe you think about something else that's going to show that you have a different skill set. Yeah. Well, I, the only thing I would add to that, and this is really just to speak to the, the number of individuals who might be online who are in the College of Sciences, maybe not in one of our natural physical areas where the where the course requirements can be more restrictive, but maybe you're in an area, maybe you're interested in psychology. Um, this is a degree program and many of the degree programs are actually kind of screaming for a minor. So do take one. But what Kim said is absolutely correct. Take something that diversifies your experience. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna say is, again, I'm gonna reference something I said at the beginning, which is what do you wanna do next? What comes next for you after this degree? And you know, just quickly use the example of the psychology major, depending on what you wanna do next, grad school, practice, um, become a CEO of a corporation, think about the open electives in your degree program. And these are gonna be, a, you'll see this in the catalog copy, talk to an advisor to find out about this. With those open electives, if you've got 15 or more open electives, unrestricted electives, this is perfect to fill in with a minor that complements your degree, that gives you some extra experience, that diversifies your knowledge, and exactly what Kim says, sets you apart and, and shows that you've pursued an additional area of study. Well, guys, we want to be respectful of your time. We appreciate your participation. Mm -hmm. Thanks again to Kim Small from Engineering and Computer Science, Dr. Teresa Dorman from the College of Sciences, Mike McKee from Optics and Photonics, and Jane Smith from the College of Undergraduate Studies. We appreciate you spending this past hour with us. Guarantee if you have more questions, probably a lot of their questions can be found or answers can be found on their, each of their websites. And we encourage you to navigate to those various UCF websites to get more information about the programs. So take care guys and we'll, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break and we will be back at 715 for our Compass and Excel presentation. So be right back.